I'm Alex. And I'm Amanda. I'm Roger! <laughs> <laughs> and I'm and, Roger! And today, <laughs> we bring you the Art Nouveau piece of <laughs> Ark. Come, come inside, Leaf. They'll catch your death of cold <laughs> Mrs. Silvermane called from the kitchen. But Gally said she's still coming. Leaf called from the entryway. He stomped his hooves nervously. The overcast sky got more threatening by the second. Maybe I should go to the cornucopia and see if Gally's dad knows where she is. You can ask your father if he saw Mr. Argento at the meeting when he gets home. Mrs. Silvermane said impatiently. Now come in, your silverlots. You made me get them, but I remember, even though no one can, it's so less expensive. Yeah, Mom, I asked <laughs> you to get them because Callie's coming to dinner. Well, I just don't like having to worry about her coming to dinner. <laughs> <laughs> well... <laughs> Well, I just don't like having to worry about her coming home from the Sylvan Meadows on a night like tonight. Don't pretend this is just about the weather, Leaf said, turning to face his mother. Gally and I planned this dinner before the meeting at the Cornucopia was called, before any of this happened. Mrs. Silvermane's rebuke was inches away from her lips when her husband's sleek white form filled the doorway behind them. Your father's <laughs> She squeaked, revealing more anxiety than she had attended, intended. <laughs> I think you should read this one, Roger, because it's your favorite sentence. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Silvermane bowed his head so that the tip of his glistening horn wouldn't scrape the top of the doorway and clop, <laughs> clop, clop, slowly and deliberately into the polished vestibule. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't get why he includes the word deliberately, as if he's being forced to enter the house. Why? <laughs> <laughs> deliberately. <laughs> yeah, I walk into my house deliberately all the time. No, you lo <laughs> How many times do you walk into your vestibule deliberately? <laughs> That's true. Okay. <laughs> what did they say, Albus? <laughs> Mrs. Silvermane asked before her son could say anything. Mr. Silvermane shook his head and ex exhaled laboriously. Equine Alliance has decided to join the other mammal factions of the kingdom and leave, he said. But the League of Extraordinary Creatures has unanimously decided to stay. Oh. Leaf, Leaf, and Mrs. Silvermane gasped in unison. <gasps> oh, oh, what will we do? <laughs> Mrs. Silvermane asked shakily. Decide where our loyalties lie. Mr. Silvermane said gravely. He clopped over to the window and looked out at the darkening land that had always been their home. It's so bad. <laughs> <laughs> Was Mr. Argento there? Leaf finally piped up. No answer. Dad, did you see Mr. Argento at the cornucopia? Leaf. Gally and her family are part of the Equine Alliance only. Unlike us, I expect she is getting ready to go on the Ark in the morning with the rest of her kind. <laughs> but... <laughs> Leaf's words died on his lips. Gally was his girlfriend, but this was his home. And if the rest of the League had decided to stay, then... I'm going to talk to Mosca! Leaf yelled as he cantered out the door before his parents could stop him. Mrs. Silvermane's cry after him was swallowed by a crack of thunder and a s and spike of lightning that gleamed off Leaf's horn before he disappeared into the darkness. Smiley face. <laughs> Does someone want to take over narration for a little bit? Uh, Amanda, you can do that. <clears throat> Mosca circled his family's ancestral peak at Thorn Ridge, as he always did when he couldn't sleep, flapping his wings softly so as to not wake the other phoenixes eye. Phoenix eye. Phoenixes. <laughs> <laughs> Even in the darkness, his keen eyes picked up a fast-moving smudge coming from the edge of Silver Downs, but Mosca continued to flap around his 
Of course. After a couple of passages, though, pa- passages is, though, he was sure t- the smudge was headed for the thorn, and he swooped down to investigate. Mosca identified his friend when they were close enough to each other for Leaf to be illuminated by Mosca's fiery orange glow. Leaf, I'm so relieved to see you. I was sure you'd be getting ready to go with the other equines. Have you seen Gally yet? <laughs> no, have you? <laughs> she was supposed to come over for dinner, but but she never showed God. Fuck Besides, <laughs> do you think I'd leave without seeing you? God. <sighs> Leaf said, half smiling, trying to diffuse the tension stifling the air. Yeah, well, I don't know what's <laughs> going on anymore. The Avian Alliance has decided to go with this Nolan fellow. No! Whatever! <laughs> but, since... <laughs> but since the League decided to stay, the Phoenix <laughs> sided with them. Mosca said. Being immortal has made our heads of all the elders can't fire generate anywhere. Everything is covered in water, <laughs> and no one can keep flying forever. Mosca clicked his beak in agitation. You think it's really gonna happen then? Leaf asked. I mean, how do we know this Noah guy is telling the truth? I don't know, dude. <laughs> Mosca conceded. <laughs> and as far as we know, Leaf continued. Humans don't even know about any of the animals in the league. What makes you think he'd take us? I don't know, man. I think at least you guys have a chance up there on the thorn. If my family doesn't go, we're gonna be in deep narwhal shit. Literally. Oh, it's Monster laughs. <laughs> <laughs> Mosca and Leaf laughed bitterly. Yeah, I guess no one in the Aqua Alliance has to go anywhere. Mosca uttered. Oh, they'll be getting more territory out of this while the rest of us are flying for our lives. You said utter. <laughs> it's, funny. <laughs> it's funny because she read it wrong. <laughs> I'm still trying to figure out my Mosca voice. Like, I still don't know what I'm what I'm doing. It sounds like you're doing Jewish kid. <laughs> now, like, at first I was going for a Christopher Walken-esque thing. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Ever. But the poker face. Since the, since the League decided to stay, the Phoenix is sided with them. Right. And Wolfie burned. Wolfie right, we'll burned. Be... <laughs> we're not recording, are we? This is just like a practice. Right? No, we're recording right now. <laughs> no, we're not. <laughs> this is... Yes, this is so great. <laughs> this can't be the real thing. We haven't even, like... This is... <laughs> <laughs> it's intermission over. <laughs> Where were we? Oh. If we can. It... If we can... Leaf said. Leaf's ears twitched and they both turned into the darkness towards the sound <laughs> of approaching hooves. It's Gully! <laughs> Oscar said before Leaf could pick her glossy <laughs> black pick <laughs> out of the darkness. Leaf shot off towards her echoing gallop. Anyway. Leaf! <laughs> <laughs> She cried as she collided with him, practically impaling herself on his horn. <laughs> oh my. I knew you'd be here. My family has decided to leave in the morning. Are the unicorns going? Your parents were arguing when I finally got over there, and I couldn't make out if they had decided anything. <sighs> uh, I don't know, <laughs> he said, nuzzling her neck. Oh, God. Mosca said that the phoenixes is, is aren't going, though. You're not? Gally said, looking up at Mosca with tears in her eyes. Apparently! 
<laughs> Moscow warbled. <laughs> a shriek pierced the night, like the lightning punctuated the darkness, and a phoenix twice the size of Mosca descended upon the trio with a fearsome look in its sharp eyes. Do you mind if I do the dance? Mosca! <laughs> no, not at all. Okay. Mosca! The young phoenix's father boomed. Oh, I told you not to descend this close to land. But, Dad! <laughs> the belt leaves the galley! <laughs> Mosca asked with pleading eyes. <laughs> the enormous phoenix's eyes glimmered with something like a pity for an instant. Say goodbye to your friends, Mosca. They have their own families to return to. Before he could leave, he placed the nub of his prodigious <laughs> swing on Leaf's shoulders. Goodbye, my boy. He said gently and took off. The three friends turned back towards each other. Mosca was the first to speak. <laughs> Well, guys, <laughs> I, 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 I guess this is goodbye. Oh, he, clo he enclosed his two friends in his wings. Gally only whined incoherent, whinnied <laughs> incoherently. <laughs> hey, you never know. Leaf choked out his chin over Mosca's shoulder. But I might see you guys. Tomorrow, like, nothing ever happened. <laughs> but after a few painful seconds, he said more quietly, Bye, bro. And then they fist bumped. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's, it's hoof bumping. <laughs> Mosca doesn't have a hoof. Hoof <laughs> and wing bumped. <laughs> like, I'm gonna be honest, I don't even know who these characters are. I don't even, what is Mosca? Is Mosca not a unicorn? Mosca's a phoenix. <laughs> Mosca's no, I don't... A I don't even know, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Unbearably soon, Mosca tore himself away, depriving his friends of the only source of light in the oppressive darkness because he's on fire. <laughs> they let their heads... They let their heads... They held their heads aloft to watch him go until raindrops fell into their eyes, blurring their vision and mingling with their tears. <laughs> I'm just smiley smiley them face. going around being like, hi, how, how are you doing? I haven't seen you at this eye before. <laughs> <laughs> I want more Mosca lines. That's it. You, you get, that's it. You get the narration from now. From yeah. here on out. <clears throat> Gally went back to life's home with them, greeted by the scent of cooked <laughs> silver <words, laughs> as if it were just a regular night on which she could come over for dinner. There was a note on the table from life's parents. Left over silver rods in the kitchen. Say goodbye to Galley for us, bitch. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, well that's okay. it then. Galley murmured. Tomorrow I will never see you again. Leif stared hard at his bedroom door for several seconds. Finally, he looked up at her. Mm -hmm. No. He said. What can we do? Oh, sorry. Wait, wait, wait. What can we do? Callie whispered. <laughs> Come with me. Leif said and let his girlfriend into his room. <laughs> Smiley, Smiley face. face. <laughs> when Leif woke the next morning, it was still raining. The sea had risen so much that he could now see it from his window. His parents weren't up yet. Callie was gone. <laughs> he walked outside the crest of a hill overlooking the sea where a huge wooden structure tossed and turned being carried farther and farther away by each wave of the outgoing tide he mm. watched it until he couldn't see it anymore couldn't see mm. the vessel that carried away his hope for the future <laughs> riveting it is riveting <laughs> Okay, so I think we should explain. Um, this was something that I had to read. Well, I had to. Someone wrote in my creative writing class last semester. In college. In college. <laughs> Rector of like the literary. She like she decides what goes through the literary magazine. Yeah, There's at the college, and um, it it 
if you couldn't tell, it was bad. <laughs> it was awful. Like, and we just I, made it a little more awful than it should. I didn't. I didn't know we were recording this. I thought we were just going for a practice run. So I just kind of bullshitted around for a lot of it. And I think that ma- that's what made it so great. Perfect. <laughs> but um, I had to write a response to this. <laughs> and I tried I to leave them with at the least some part. dignity and criticize it the right way instead of being like, this is bullshit. I think you should explain <laughs> what it's about, though. Because, like, I don't think anyone, re- like, most people probably don't understand what, what the hell this shit is. Oh, this is, this is creationist fan fiction, in case you couldn't tell. Basically, yeah, it's um, it's uh, Leaf is a unicorn. Galley is is his horse girlfriend, and Mosca is his fist pumping best friend Phoenix. <laughs> Wing pumping. <laughs> Wing, pardon me. <laughs> it's um, <clears throat> that was uh, Leaf and and Mosca are like Bill and Ted. <laughs> Did you say wing humping? Is that what <laughs> wing, <laughs> wing pumping? Wing pumping. Um, <laughs> but basically, they they hear, oh hey, this Noah fellow's going around and he's gonna save all these animals from this flood with an ark. So, you know what? The unicorns and the the phoenixes we're part phoenixes, of the league of ex- yes. phoenix eye are part of the league of extraordinary creatures. <clears throat> It's so, very yeah, prestigious. To... It's just prestigious. Pre- 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 <laughs> <laughs> it's it's very close to um uh, the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, except awful. Except it's closer to the Pandora Pony. The Pandora Pony Party. Yes. <laughs> Much closer in political ideals. Um. But yeah, basically they decide we're, we're not going up with this this crap because. Well, it's not explained. <laughs> the answer's not explained. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so. It's, uh, it's a story, you know? Leaf and Galley go home and. Die? No, fanfic. Oh. <laughs> yeah, they go home and they fanfic together. I was, I was saying, like, well, like, what was on the top of my mind, like, what I hoped would happen, but. They clop together. Uh, they clop? <laughs> I can't believe you do this to me. We clop together. <laughs> we'll never clop again. <laughs> oh, uh, I think we but, should um, just go with the response. So who wants to read the response? Uh, I could do my pseudo-British accent, which was terrible. But... I really like the way that Amanda was doing it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, anything, anything that happens. Oh, okay. The posh. All right. And I I'll can add. Get my... I can add the music in afterwards. Okay. Good. Good. What good. music? The one I sent you. Uh, yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. If that's okay with you. No, I don't care. Okay. I was gonna. Cause... It's not done yet, but I don't think this should take longer than that thing is. Yeah, probably not. Okay. <laughs> if not, I can always put "Hey Alligator" to it. Shut up! It exists. <laughs> I know it exists. That's why I can put it to it, and then everybody would know. <laughs> anyway. Uh, I, I seriously thought this was like a rough draft kind of thing like, <laughs> like a practice I totally didn't know this was being recorded everybody you should what? totally judge him judge <laughs> I wasn't even trying to do decently <laughs> you think we that were trying like to judging. do decently <laughs> I would have tried a little bit harder to make the voices somewhat understandable anyway Amanda you could go. that's what the subtitles are for true All right, let, let the review the response from commence. our good Oaks Fu commence. All right. <clears throat> I'm not entirely sure what to say about this. First off, it's not the kind of story I like, but that's opinion based, so I won't talk about the story much. I did, however, like the account of extrapola- amount, pa- pardon me, <clears throat> of extrapolation that you left the re- uh, for the readers at the end of the piece. It allows for a sort of audience participation that makes it more memorable and more likely to have a lasting impression upon the reader. That being said, I feel the characters should be more developed, especially Galley, since she such uh, has such a pivotal role in the story. As it is, I understand that Leaf plays the pivotal role, but since he is transferring his place to be carried by Galley, <clears throat> I fell to like she needs at least some sort of presence. 
the character of Mosca's father is an interesting case as well. For example, why doesn't he acknowledge Galley and only Leaf? There's also seems to be an almost forced quality to Leaf at times, the way he talks to other people. people? The d- the people who aren't people. <clears throat> the divide between the way that he talks to his parents and the way that he talks to Mosca and Galley is a bit too large to be slightly unsettling. There's nothing to help the reader understand that this is the same person besides the name. In summary, I feel like the characters deserve a little bit more development. She has such a pivotal role in the story. <laughs> the pivotal! She has a pivotal role! <laughs> It allows for a sort of audience participation. <laughs> well, I couldn't have said other pony because there are horses and unicorns and phoenixes. Yeah, that's true, Amanda. But you're not in the My Little Pony. Sense. Amanda, you're not in My Little Pony. Friendship is magic lingo, which is disappointing. No, I'm not, because I never want to Every be. Every pony should be. Oh, God. <laughs> You mean Alex could be bronies? <laughs> My we could God. Be a tri- we could be a triad of bronies. First of all, I could never be a brony. Even if I wanted to be, I could never be a brony. Because it implies bro. <laughs> Except no. Because it's gone beyond that. No, you're a bro to oh. me. You're a bro to me. Oh, thanks. <laughs> no, they tried introducing Pegasisters, but no. Bronies. <laughs> no. Pegasus. Bronies better. <laughs> Anyway. Jesus Christ, are you actually <laughs> posting this, or is this like a fun thing for us? Uh, you post this. You yeah, post it. I can post this, right? <laughs> yes. I don't care. I mean, Okay, no, I was checking with Roger, because he's like, uh, you're, are you posting this? I mean, it's, yeah. <laughs> Good. Oh, yeah, I, w- I would love to post this, because this is hilarious. I don't know if anyone besides us is going to find it very funny, since we were just, like, dicking around the whole time. But... <laughs> there are plenty of people that'll find it hilarious. This is true. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ, that's a bad story. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's another one that I wanted to get my hands on about a guy just talking about Boston and just talking about the landmarks in it. Like, what? that's all that Boston is to him. The landmarks, Land- but... I think, yeah. I feel like this is more easy to make fun of, because it's, like, just genuinely bad. Oh, no, it is but... genuinely bad as well. <clears throat> okay, well, just... you can get your hands on it, and, uh, you know... Uh, my friend, my friend from that class should still have his copy, so I'm gonna see if I can get it from him. I wonder if they, like, imagine if this person found your YouTube channel and found her <laughs> Oh god, I would be terrified. <laughs> That'd be awful, because like, she sounds like a man. terrible person that would be all like, But that was the best piece of literature I have ever written! It has such a pivotal place in English literature! <laughs> it revolutionized novel! <laughs> it revolutionized the concept of unicorn fanfic! <laughs> oh. 